Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to get to the presence of God and receive God's anointing to perform what God has asked us to do. There was such a man who had an encounter with God's spirit and was anointed to be the king of Israel. And the prophet said something to him. He said, and you shall become another man. You need to become another man. You will not be the ordinary man. The one that entered into the 40, we, uh, 40 days fashion, but you'll be another man that came out from the 40 days prayer and fasting. Anytime we enter like this, we don't become the same. Jesus entered into his 40 days prayer and fasting, but the Bible says that he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Then after that, the Bible says he left in the power then Jesus was led, and sometimes you are led into a situation which is not very great. It looked like this is not God, but it's God. But when he was leaving, he was led into the desert, and he came out of the desert. And let's look at what happened when he was leaving. The Bible said that, and Jesus came out with power. You don't just be led to be tempted, but you also come with strength, with power, with everything. And what we came out of that place is with power. Saul went, was led. He didn't know he was led, but they used a donkey to lead him. He was looking for the donkey, but in fact, God was the one looking for him. And God used that donkey in his frustration, he tried to seek the mind of God. If a donkey is lost, why do you trouble a prophet? But it was the leading of God. And he said, I didn't have money. And there was someone by him, maybe the helper, who said, no. You don't have money. I have something to help you. So let's go. And God orchestrated the thing so well that the time they got there, the man was also passing. They didn't go there five days late before. They didn't go there two days before. They went there exactly the time. God knows how to orchestrate things to favor you. <laughs> Sometimes we think it's ordinary, but you see the hand of God in our lives. We may not hear God say, move, but he's moving you. God had also spoken to the prophet that night before he came, that he's going to meet that guy. So while he was looking for the prophet, the prophet was still looking for him. And God brought their path to cross. He was then installed as a anointed as what? As king. And the prophet said many things to him. And the Bible said, they said, and you shall become what? Another man. I like that. And you shall become what? He said, Saul will have some encounter. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy with them. And be turned into what? Another man. God has a way. Anytime the Holy Spirit come into a man, he does not leave him the same way. He turned him to what? 
another man. That is why when you receive God's spirit inside you and receive Christ in you, you become a new creature. You become another man. The old man has passed away. The one the devil you should be and be able to defeat all the time is no longer you. You are now a conqueror and overcomer. The Holy Spirit makes people another man. He took up fishermen and turned them toward another man. He said, Peter, you will no longer be fishing for man. You will be another man that will not be looking for fish, but for men. So any encounter with the Holy Spirit does not re make you remain the same. You cannot say, I have met God and still be the same. You should be another man. If you were poor and living in poverty, you should be lifted out of the poverty and be another man. If a country gets an encounter with the Holy Spirit, it shall be another country. The same way, Jacob encountered God and he became another man. His name changed. His brother who was looking for Jacob to bring revenge for taking his blessing amassed an army and was facing Jacob. But instead of meeting Jacob, he met Israel. His battle was not with Israel. His battle was with Jacob. But he met another man. Today, you will be turned into another man. experienced what the prophet told him and he himself prophesied he didn't believe he could prophesy and they saw Paul prophesying among the prophets a Saul and said Saul is Saul also among the prophets because <laughs> they look at Christian <laughs> nothing smell on his body like he's a prophet there's some, some people not to spell on, our, on us. But God's spirit can come upon us. And we can be another man. We can be another one. So, then, went on his way. Then, Samuel followed, um, anointed him, and some people refused to recognize his, what is upon him? They said, we won't take you. you can be our leader. Some people can never accept some people on top of them. That. They look at you and say, who are you? To rule over me. To some of them. Then a man from there came and said, but who is their father? Therefore, it became a prophet. A Saul also. No, no, that's not what I'm, I'm talking about. As he moved, he went there. Uh, he, he, he was going to be. Some people said that we will not accept Saul's presidency over our life. One, look at his family. Who is he? From what, from which, listen. You know Benjamin? Benjamin is what? The last born, the small boy. And Israel, they believe in hierarchy. First born, second born like Africa as we believe in age (laughs) 
Once you are the oldest, even if you don't have sense, you should be the one that should rule. So, <laughs> they said we will never accept this. His family, by our stature, whoever is of the firstborn is higher than the lastborn. Why should he rule over us? Some will not accept you because of where you come from, because of the type of English you speak, because of the school you attended, because of, tell me, the husband you've married, because of the wife you've got, because of the car you ride, because of the throttle you take. <laughs> because of the, even the place you live. The moment you tell them I'm from the king's town. Neiman. The town of the real king, me, man. They try to look at you. If he got some money, he tried to put it somewhere. <laughs> because for Neiman to this place, there's a place called Kaukudi. Those who don't understand how, sir, see me, bring the money. <laughs> Allah. Yeah. When you say kaukudi, it means that bring. So you don't use money to pass around that at that time. If you are moving, at, you have to empty your pocket. Now it's now well done. Lights are there, so you can walk and over life for first year more life for her. <laughs> Praise God. The moment you mention that place, they say, Oh, you are from this place. People then look down upon you. The moment you mention your church, they look down upon you. You mention your tribe, they look down upon you. Some people will never even marry you because of your tribe. Saul was disadvantaged like that. But God has to prove himself. When God anoints you, a day comes that he brings his approval on you. So they said, we won't accept Saul's chieftaincy. He can't rule over us. But when God anoints you, look, it's not whether people accept you or not. It is whether God has anointed you. So, so went back. Sometimes we are anointed and we forget that we are anointed. Went back to his farm, doing his farming, Taking care of the things, and forgot about how even he could rule. Then a situation arose. There were some group of people. Hmm. Chapter eleven, First Samuel chapter eleven, verse one. Is that Nahash? The Ammonite went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to him, Make a treaty with us and we will subject to you. Sometimes strong people want to bully weaker countries. They didn't ask for fight. He said, Today I'm going to fight with you. And he knows that you can't match him. But he wants to fight with you. So Nahash, in fact, the meaning of Nahash is serpent. 
The very serpent in the garden. The very serpent that fights you. The very serpent that won't destroy you came and said, let we, I want to fight you. And the people came and said, no, don't fight us. We will be serving you. You know, you can never negotiate with the devil. He's not a Christian to negotiate with him. So the people said, we want to be your servant. On this condition, they said, Nahash said that, the Ammonites answered them, on this condition, I will make a covenant with you that I may put out where? All your word. Say right eyes. I will gush out all your word. Like all of us said, they've removed our right eyes. Your right eyes. The one that sees well for the rest to follow. I am going to shortcut your vision. I am going to take your vision that drives you. If I take it, if you are set for me to take it and remove your right eye, the reason why you take your right eye is that so that you be a disgrace. Satan always wants to disgrace you. Oh, let's, let, let's look at it. On this occasion, I will make a covenant with you that I may put out your right eyes and bring what? Reproach on what? All Israel. When one Christian eye is removed, a whole Christian life, all of us have been put to a reproach. When one Christian falls, all of us begin to be like we are falling. Don't be happy if a Christian is falling. Yeah. When one church is attacked, the entire church is in trouble. The enemy has a way of dividing churches. In fact, let me tell you, the easiest people to divide is churches. No wonder politicians don't fear the church, but they fear our brothers. Even if their pastor have done wrong, you can't talk about it. Let a Christian pastor do wrong, the Christian will help to kill that pastor. She now. That's it. Gaskia. He said, that is it. And I said, that's the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. He always want to remove our eyes. He wants to remove the vision of the church. Make the, the church see things in the wrong way. Reposition the church. And let the church see things like how the world sees it. He said, if I can treat the church like that, then we can stay together. If the church can compromise and behave the way the world behaved and will allow the world to lead them if they will lose their vision and not see right then I will sign the covenant and the people said you know what they said the elders of Jabez said to him hold off for seven days say seven days that we may send messengers to all the territory of Israel. And then if there is no one to save us, we will come out to you. There is always a person, a savior, who must save the people. In the midst of every threat 
in the people's life, God have saviors inside. That let give us a chance to go around and see whether we can find a savior. When the devil tried to destroy and remove one eye of the, the entire world, God brought a savior, which is Christ. So they went around. So the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and told the news in the hearing of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and did what? And wept. They had sympathizers. You know, when there is funeral, they said, all sympathizers are what? Cordially invited. And those, they, some of them cry more than they believe. They cried and cried. When there is no help, that is where crying comes. They wept. Meanwhile, those who were weeping, there was strength in them. Something like the devil closed your eyes, your energy, and your strength, and what is in you. Instead of looking inside you to see what can we do to solve this problem, they gave up the moment they start coming they have given up they think we are finished they think that is the end and while they were weeping there was one who was anointed let's look look at the the way anointed people behave when they hear such news now there was Saul, the he had them anointed coming behind the head from the field and Saul said what's what troubled the people that they weep? And they told him the words of the men of Jabesh. What was their words? That somebody's going to remove their one eye and bring reproach and disgrace to the entire world. Israel. Look at what happened in the six. What happened? Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor and bring liberty to those who are in trouble like that. So the same spirit came upon Saul. This one was not Saul. It was God's spirit upon Saul. Everybody heard it. They wept. The one the spirit of the Lord came upon have a different attitude. If you have a spirit of God upon you and you hear a news, there's a different way you react. And his anger was greatly aroused. He couldn't understand why this, excuse me to use that word, these stupid people, serpent, just wanted to remove the eye of one of us. We will not stay. Don't say because it's not me. So they should remove their eyes. The next time he finished with your, his eyes, he will come to yours. You don't give devil one inch. If you give him one inch, he will take. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all territory of Israel by the hands of the messenger, saying, whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the people. And you see how the Lord, the Lord, there's a, two different kinds of fear. The first people had a fear of the Nahash. The second people had the fear of the Lord. So it is God's fear that brings you divine victory. The fear of the Lord came upon the people, fell upon on them. And they came out with one consent. It brings unity. It brings strength. So they said, within some few seconds, those who were crying, everybody stopped crying. And so that, why don't we come together to, to rescue our brothers? So the spirit of the Lord brings us together to be able to fight a common goal. When he numbered them in Bezek, 
the children of Israel were how many? Huh? So there were 300,000 strong men capable of destroying those people, but they were all going to cry. They had all this strength, but it was hidden. But when God's spirit comes, it touches every man, and they got 300 what? Thousand men and 30,000 uh, what? And how many people from Judah? So three, 330. I don't know where that Ghana army is. Close to that. Got an entire army ready to fight. Ha, ah, I love it. Let, let's look at what quickly we'll finish now. And they said to the messenger who came, Thus shall you say to the men of Jebesh Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Amen. Tell somebody you shall have help. Amen. Help is coming to you. Amen. Tomorrow by this time, at noon, 12 noon, not at night, 12 noon, help is coming to you. Go and tell them. They went and told them that our eyes, if our eyes are the one you use for, you are going to use for your soup. Forget it. You will never have the soup been done. If it's our eyes <laughs> you will use for your juju, forget it. By 12 noon tomorrow, you will see your position. God will shake things and put you in your rightful position and put us in our rightful position. Who is a man that can withstand the mind of God? So they went and told them, and they said, them, So tell them, the Lord, thus shall you say to my men of Jehovah, okay, you shall have help. Then the messengers came and reported it to the men of Jabesh, and they were what? We should be able to bring gladness to people's life. When people are pressed towards the world, happiness and gladness should come. Finally, let me see. Therefore, the men of Jabesh tomorrow will come out to you, and you may do with us whatever seems good to you. We are not going to permit our eyes to be, we are going to come to you. You do what you think you can do to us. Now tell the devil he should do to you what he thinks he can do to you. So the devil begin to deceive you all. Oh, this disease, uh, it will kill you. Hey! You will never marry you. Tell him, I have not come from today. So they moved. So it was on the next day that Saul put the people in three companies. Any time fighting, there's also a strategy. The spirit of God has a strategy of fighting his battle. So he gives him the spirit to strategize. So his strategy, there was a strategy he put there, and they went again. The Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the camp in the, in the morning watch, and killed what? Ammonite until what? The heat of the day. And it happened that those who survived were scattered. Tell yourself, those who are against us, when they come together, you are going to, they are going to get scattered. That's what the Bible says. They shall come in one way. And flee in what? Scattered. Most of the time, the enemy use fear to intimidate us, to keep us under control, to, 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 to destroy our life and to conquer us, you will see your strength. Like I told you that uh, uh, there was some big boy who used to be in the school. There was some boy who used to, be, he, he used to threaten, uh, frighten everybody. Uh, uh, his nickname is Ahmad Belo. That is wicked. 
Everybody fear him. And one day I told him, when you're coming, you know, in the village, we don't eat at school. You eat before you go. So now you're going, you are late because you go to the river, come for your teacher, come to the, your parent, then you go and bath. By the time you come, everything you, the, the food is your life, a, a roasted yam, you put it on, you put it in your pocket while you're eating. And I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> then what's new? If you look at my pocket, you see yam inside. <laughs> he will see you and stay for his hand. Whether you put it there or not, he will remove it and eat it. And he will make you carry his chair. We used to carry our chair to, listen, the chair we used for school is what the chair our fathers used to, to eat. They'll sit on it and eat it, <laughs> the chair and table. When they finish eating, the next morning you take it to school. You carry his on top. And one day he told me I should run and my leg was paining me. I couldn't, I said, run! And I couldn't run. And this guy, uh, 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 don't call, he, he stepped on my, on that feet. No, no, he didn't step on me. He said, when we close, wait, meet me. When they tell that you are in trouble. So I pray that we will never close. <laughs> but that day, the time went very fast. All what was taught, I didn't hear anything. After closing, everybody was leaving, and I was saying, teacher wouldn't leave. The teacher just took us his sister. I said, Jay, I wish the teacher would ask me to carry his books to his house. But the teacher didn't tell me. He chose another person. I said, I'm dead. He said, sit down. He was sitting by me and making me like this. <laughs> My heart was like, boom, boom, boom. And everybody left, two of us. He said, come out. I came out. He said, you, I asked you to run. You didn't run. I said, I want my leg. I begged you. Hi, before I say, I could say my leg. The guy stepped on the toe. Bah! And the thing went into my heart. Before I realized, I reacted. And I gave him the blow. Bah! And I, he came and I went and I carried him. Put him down. Rah! Gave him some nice sun to eat. Gave him some nice gary to eat on the ground. And I realized I was strong. And I didn't know I had the strength in me. But until it is provoked, the spirit of the Lord maybe that time came into me. <laughs> The day I beat him, when I finished, he knew I was very strong and stronger than him. He went in disgrace, and I told him, tomorrow, when I'm coming, run and come and carry my chair. Now, you're going to change the way the devil is frightening you. You are going to tell the devil, I am now on top. There's going to be an exchange. They were taught these people were to be running and this uh, Jab uh, uh, Nahash will be chasing them. But now they are now chasing Nahash. You're going to chase the serpent. The serpent can chase you in your dreams. It can chase you in your business. It can chase you in your health. You are now going to chase Nahash. Finally, what happened? So it was on the next day. And Saul so put the people together. Okay, what happened? And kill Ammonet until the heat of the day. And it happened that those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. Your enemies that plan against you, they will no longer be two again. They cannot come together to plan. Confusion will come among them. And now you will take them one by one 
and destroy them one by one. Their strength have been divided. They have been splitted. Every strength they have that want to fight you, God has split it into two or three. So they can no longer face you and frighten you. You're going to destroy them in the name of Jesus. And we have come out of this greater works to face the old enemy who used to threaten us, send all kinds of messages in our mind, in our spirit, in our soul, in our family, in our marriages, in our workplaces, in our country, that today we are coming. That tomorrow by 12 midday, help is coming Amen. to you. Next year, by another greater ways, help will come to you. That situation will no longer stay with you throughout this year. The next year you move to the greater ways, you will look back and what is happening to you will be a history. Now has the old serpent have been destroyed. The strange thing is that they had what it takes to defeat Nahash. But there was no one to stir them up. They had the strength. Normally, people have strength and people take advantage of your, uh, you, are, you are ignorant. And come and take your riches and make you slaves. They come and take your donkeys and let you pull the donkey while they sit on. They will come and take your gold and leave only a little for you to weaken your currency. They will come and take your children and abuse them. We have the man. This is not a political man. We have the spiritual man. We have people God's spirit lives in them. In him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. Yeah. Nahash cannot touch us. Yeah. We are moving in him. Yeah. We are living in him. Yeah. We are having our being in him. Yeah. Don't fear. Cancer is not to kill you. Yeah. What is the one, the latest one? That put you, everybody under prison, in prison. Huh? Monkey? <laughs> they said there's another one called monkey, isn't it? There's one that can say, they call it a, a, the virus that, what the name? Oh, you all know the virus, that's why you are putting this. What is it? COVID-19. Koro. Put entire well under lock. Like Nahash. People couldn't even make noise. You know when the first time he came and they put us under uh, is it curfew or how do you call it? Lockdown. Lockdown. Entire nation was quiet. People can't even talk loud. As if the virus have ears. <laughs> the virus they haven't changed. But you have changed. Yes. That's it, doesn't it? But it's a fear there. What if it was 20 people who had it? 
were more afraid than 5,000 having it now. I pray for boldness in our heart. Amen. Divine boldness. That whatsoever is in us. Look, God has placed certain things in you. As I continue to talk about this spiritual warfare, I will come to what you have in you. The weapons you have shouldn't be superior to the devil's weapons. They are long range. And they can destroy the devil's camp. But you are not aware. You only have to learn how to use those weapons. And you will overcome. God bless you. Amen. We'll take our second offering. The prophet, why taking offerings like that? <laughs> there is someone who gives, yet have great riches. People who give become rich. This church. It's a giver. It's not that we have extra. But we give because we must give. And I want you to give. After coming from greater works, you should give a greater gift. Beginning a new life in power and in strength. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. The liberal soul shall prosper. I pray, and that liberal soul shall be watered as they give. May heavens be open. May you rebuke the devourer. And may you pour out blessings from heaven to fill their bands in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen.
Hallelujah. Uh, we will. I want to first also thank all the volunteers, all those who volunteered to serve in various teams during the Greater Works Conference, and all those who also contributed in finances and on other areas of it. And I would like to pray for you. The best, when you give, it must give him back to you. So I'll give you my prayer too. So uh, can I pray for them? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for their services for you. Anyone that serves your people serves you. They made it very easy for the Holy Spirit to move and to bring help to other people. They contributed in their finances. They contributed with their strength, with their skills. Oh Lord, never let their labor be in vain. Reward each and every one with the hours that is spent all day and all night preparing, oh God, for this program. Lord, some even got sick out of it or tired out of it, but they carry themselves and still continue. Lord, bless them. And also, I also pray for those who also even went whatever blessing, anointing they received, let it be carried upon them. And above all those, by various reasons why they couldn't go, whatever blessings we took, oh Lord, let them also receive some back in Jesus' name. Cover each and every one here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much. Uh, next year, I want to get yourself ready. And don't only wait for uh, greater works. Use that skill, that uh, strength, that energy, uh, that commitment. Use it in this church. God bless you. We will we'll be closing very soon. Uh, the first time is after closing, we will meet you at the just on my right here at the a, under the A structure. Uh, the host and hostesses will meet you there, and uh, 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 whatever your concerns are, they will help you. Hallelujah. We have here. Uh, Nana Kwekudang Kwadeted, a manhini of more traditional area. My, my own manhini. <laughs> Nana, you're welcome. He's my chief. <laughs> so he can summon me. Hallelujah. And when I was a pastor, I was in charge of the Presby Church in my village. He brought the SDA church to my village. So he was the SDA pastor, I was the uh, Presby pastor. <laughs> so anytime there is any religion, they say, no. We come together. I is my brother, my younger brother too. But I won't tell you what he did to me. <laughs> Amen. Now he's on my hands, so I won't tell you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I uh, will share the grace. Look at somebody's face. And Tell the person something. <laughs> Tell him what touched your heart. <laughs> I know some of you, you only remember the serpent. Wahawa! Wahawa! Oho, Hina! Atwasa. 
we are going to close. Like I would have sung a song. Why 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 Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just to remind you that at our service today, there will be the Thanksgiving service for our late brother, Mr. Gideon Nee Kote at the Youth Hall. So please take note. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.